Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at Xcode 12 and I'm going to show you the best new features that I've found so far. And um, welcome, by the way, to macOS Big Sur. Welcome to Xcode 12. And here in my Xcode project that I've prepared for this video, we're actually working with a version of an application that we've created last year as an introduction for complex Swift UI layouts. You will find the link for this video in the video description below. The cool thing about SwiftUI is that what you've learned so far is still true this year. It's just getting better. And many of the changes uh, that we're going to have a look at um, or the new great features of Xcode have to do with Swift UI. So let's get right started. This is the simple application that we're going to deal with kind of. I just use it to show you around a little bit and to make some interesting changes. So um, here we are in the application and um, if you have a look at my document, uh, what is really cool here is that I now have a shared group, an iOS group and a macOS group which means that from now on you have a very simple way and I'm going to just create a new project here real quickly to create multi-platform applications. Just have to select app, hit next, create your application and then what you get are these three groups shared iOS and macOS and you can just define your user interface once and reuse it for the iOS target and the macOS target and Xcode creates all the necessary groundwork already for you. So it's a big year for actually creating apps on every Apple platform and to make your app available on as many platforms as you can. So what I did was taking the old project, just copy and pasting all the code um, into this new structure and here we are, it's just working right out of the box. So this is not just an iPhone application, I can just use macOS as my target, run it, and if we have a look at that and we run the application, then you see uh, that there are still a few problems. But let me just quickly show you that the basic functionality of the application, showing a drink in that case and ordering it is already there. The data model works, the presentation works, and there are just a few fixes that we have to apply to actually make this app work on a Mac. And it works on iOS and iPadOS uh, pretty fast. So that's a really great step forward. And uh, coming to the next features uh, one by one, let's just have a quick look here at my preview in the canvas. What we can do and what we could do previously um, using storyboards is now also available here um, for our previews in SwiftUI. So what if I'd like to see my application as a macOS application? Of course, that works. Let me just quickly go back to an iPhone 11, for example. As you can see, um, we immediately get uh, the um, simulator or the preview here. And what I can do is make changes to uh, my preview right here in my canvas. I can choose the device that I'd like to see. I'm on iPhone 11 here, but I can also choose my uh, color scheme. Do I want to see it in dark mode or light mode? Just one click away um, and now. And if we scroll down a little to the definition of the preview, you can see that this change now is also now reflected directly in code. And I can add new previews as well. So as you can see, another change in code, but this time I'd like to see it in light mode. And I'd also like to use uh, maybe extra large text to see how this looks. So a very easy way now to look at all the different aspects uh, that you get for free using Swift UI, but also to check on your layout and on your user interface in a very quick way. But it doesn't stop there. Let's make maybe a few changes to our application, open up the drink detail. This is where, or let me just quickly show you how we get to there. So once I press on, once I, so once I run this um, and I press on one of these uh, drink items, I get a detail view with a picture 
a description and a order button. But that doesn't look so good at the moment and we also do not have a title, which is kind of strange um, for that kind of app. Um, so let's go into the drink details real quickly. Now we have our image, we have our text, and we have our button. So as you can see, or the um, horizontal stack that has a space or two spacers to center this button. And the cool thing is that of course, I can just press and click on these items to actually highlight them in code. But what's really great now is that I can press Command Shift L on my keyboard uh, to bring up, of course, my object library. And I could drag a button or a form or whatever I like to uh, my Swift UI view, and I would also get that in code. But now you also have modifiers. And what I can do here is scroll through this list and maybe have a look at a modifier and see, okay, we have a blur here. And I could just drag and drop that, well, to my text or to my image. And as you can see below the preview, we also get the information where we are going to add this modifier. So just releasing that, we get an immediate effect and we also see in code how this works. So this is a great way to learn how SwiftUI works. And if you um, are still new to SwiftUI and would like to get right into it, have a look at my Udemy course. It is linked in the video description below. Um, it is a great way to get started. And as I said, what you've learned so far is still true and it's just getting better. And now I'd like to add my title. So we're going to use a text for that. But maybe we should have a look at the data model first. And there is also a cool new way to handle your files or to work with your files. As you can see, if I have my tab bar open here, which I can also um, set as a default by clicking on view and always show tab bar or select always show tab bar. And as you can see, my tab that is open at the moment um, is written in italic. And this is because this can change depending on which file I'm selecting. But the cool thing is now, once I double click here, I get a new tab and can still switch between my old tab and my new tab here. And um, I can just open up as many of them as I like just by double clicking. So I think that's a cool new feature uh, to work with your files, but it doesn't end there. What you can also do, and this is quite important for us now um, to uh, have a look at our data model, I can press Command Control T to actually bring up a new editor, or I could also click on File, New Editor. And what I can do now is just take one of these groups here, my model, for example, and just drop that in my tab bar. And by that, opening up all of the files in that group going through that. And as you can see, we have an item name here or in our JSON file. Um, and we also have that in our data model. So let's quickly use this name now in our Swift UI view to actually display the name of the beverage. So now that I'm done, I can just close the whole editor and I'm back to where I want to be. So um, what I'd like to do is adding my text here and this is going to be drink. And if you notice, code completion is so much faster. I, it's, it's almost immediate. So this is great for your work because there is no latency. Um, earlier you had to wait 0.5 or 0.4 seconds. Um, this is quite noticeable. Now it's just so fluent and quick. It's so awesome. Um, and what I can do now here is of course, uh, first of all, resume my um, preview. So there is my iced coffee and I'd like to have that with a font with large title. But what I could also do, and this is another great feature uh, that really works now, um, is let's qu just quickly remove that. I can bring up my inspector here, the top right corner, and click on my iced coffee or on my text. And what I can do now is change the font right here, for example, to large title. And this really works now really great. And also how we can add modifiers is also very cool. So we could add another modifier here just by scrolling through that list. This image could also be pushed a little bit more to the top of our screen. So to change that, let me just quickly add maybe a spacer right below our button that pushes everything a little bit more up, but there we still have this safe area um, that will not be filled. So what I can do here now is maybe have a look at my library and here we have edges ignoring safe area. And now I should drag that 
to my vertical stack. And as you can see, with the hints that I get at the bottom of the screen, uh, this is really easy to actually place that. And then I can make some modifications here. For example, pressing also control option and click on VStack. And then I can see my modifier edges ignoring safe area here and just maybe select top because this is all that matters for us at the moment. And what I also notice is that we don't really have a padding for um, the trailing area here for our text for the drink description. So we're also quickly pressing here on padding with control option pressed on the keyboard. And then we will also add a padding here on the right. And with that done, I am pretty content with the result. And now we can have a look at that again in our preview. And as you can see, this looks now a lot better than before. So this was just a quick overview about what Xcode can do now in Xcode 12. Just to sum this up again, we have the document tabs uh, that you can reach with a double click. We have draggable groups to your tab bar. We do have these groups for shared iOS and macOS development. We can search for modifiers in Swift UI. We get code completion that is up to 12 times faster than before. And there's also more that I haven't covered yet, like for example, a store kit, transaction manager, or better inference, or using your own controls with Swift Package Manager. So there is really a lot more to come. Please let me know what's most interesting for you coming from WWDC 2020. Subscribe to this channel to not miss any future tutorials. We could reach 100,000 subscribers this year if you support this channel. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.